Hey, welcome to the Cam and Otis Show. On this episode, Navy veteran and entrepreneur Scott Mackis joining us. Scott, how you doing today, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, thanks so much for having me on the, the show today, guys. Yeah, it's going to be fun, man. Uh, uh, I, I want to know, because this is, this is always my fun question with all our vets, is after being in the big, the big gray and underway, what, what drove you to say, nah, I don't need it. I, I want to do it my way, you know, and, and not in the bad way, my way or the highway sort of thing. You know, cause that always sounds bad, but it's really, I mean, that's what makes you drive, drives you to be an entrepreneur. I want to do it my way. Right. So what, what happened, man? What was the catalyst there? Yeah. So uh, I think it was the whole uh, haze gray and underway. The whole part of that <laughs> was, the, was the reason, but now nah, I, I really enjoyed my, my time in the Navy. And, you know, I was talking with another veteran yesterday on the 4th of July at a picnic at his house and and he had this map, you know, of all these places with like pins of like all the places he had been to. And uh, then I was kind of thinking back to all the places that I had been to when I was mostly in the Navy, you know, and and uh, and so it was such a great experience to um, travel the world, live in a lot of different uh, really cool places, serve with a lot of great people um, and, you know, you kind of take it for granted back, you know, I was 20 one through 26, you know, I was in my early twenties when I was in the Navy and I was like, Oh yeah, you know, I'll be back to, you know, South America someday. And, you know, 20 years have gone by and I have never been, <laughs> been back. Right. So Next I'd, time I'd I'm great, here, I'll do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I've had that? some great, oh, yeah. great times in the Navy, met some great friends. Um, but you know, for me, uh, you know, in my upbringing, you know, my parents were always around, you know, so they were, my dad was always there to coach my, my baseball team and the soccer team and, and all of those things. And that was really important to me. And, um, you know, and so having a family, and if you're deployed six months out of the year, that's really tough, you know? And so that was probably the, the, the main reason why I got out was because I wanted to have a family and, and spend time with them and, and then just the deployment schedule of being in the Navy and making that a career is, is really tough on a family. So that was really the, the primary reason I had no idea what entrepreneurship was back then. So that wasn't really, uh, you know, um, but I did, you know, kind of come to, you know, find that path eventually, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the, the story, my transition story. Yeah. But how'd you, how'd you find it? I mean, how'd you decide? Because, you know, the, the comfort zone is, you know, it, whether you, whether you do one tour or, you know, 30 years, it's get a job, which is much different than start a business. Yeah. So, uh, and that's exactly what I did out of the Navy is I got a job, but kind of in between when I was on shore duty uh, and, you know, my last two years, my two years on shore duty. And uh, as I was kind of finishing up my five-year commitment in the Navy, I went to business school. And I had never, I mean, I went to the uh, Naval Academy and there's not a single business class that they teach there, right? It's all like engineering classes and, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, and that's, they're preparing you to, to, to be an officer in the Navy. Um, but I went to business school when I was on shore duty in the evenings. And, and it was really the first time in my entire life that I had like taken a class or classes that I just really enjoyed, you know, and I was like looking forward to, you know, the, the next classes and doing the assignments. And I was meeting some, actually some other people I was stationed with at the time were, were doing the same thing, going to an evening MBA program. And so that's kind of where I was always good in math. Um, but I had never figured out a way to apply it in a way that was like exciting to me. And so here was a way I could use those math skills to like make money and <laughs> like that sort of thing. So I thought that was really interesting. So so that's kind of one part of it. The other part of it is um, my wife's family, uh, they're entrepreneurs. And so like growing up, my parents, you know, my mom was a teacher. My dad worked for the, the county that we grew up in. And so I was never really exposed to that, that life. And, you know, my wife's family, they own like restaurants, real estate, and mm -hmm. all these really uh, cool things. And so I kind of got to see how they were living and, you know, like what was possible. And that really inspired me. So 
there would be certain days like I'd cut out of work early and like head up to my father-in-law's office and like with my notepad and like I just would ask him questions and it was really inspiring to me. So that's kind of was the spark and wanting to mm-hmm. take that path. Although I didn't know what I wanted to start. And so it was, there was a little bit of a challenge there. I didn't want to start something that didn't have, you know, like purpose, you know, that didn't have like something that was tied to like why I'm here, you know? But, and so I wasn't exactly sure what to, what to start. So I went and got a job and I worked uh, in medical device sales for about a year and a half. And then I was in the construction industry and, and sales management type jobs for uh, about eight or nine years. Uh, but halfway through that, I started throwing like starting side hustles and throwing things at the wall, man, just to see what would stick. Because, you know, when I was at those, those day jobs, um, I don't know. I just, I felt like I, I had a lot of potential that was untapped Mm -hmm. and really just kind of throwing yourself out there in a situation where you're completely exposed. Right. And you've got to, you got to make it happen, which is what entrepreneurship is all about is how I've, thought I could, you know, maximize that potential. So um, anyways, happy to kind of go, you know, into those th- more details there, but um, eventually just kind of got- ask something before you jump in, Camden, because yeah. I, I heard something yep. that I thought was interesting. At least, at least this is what I heard. And I'm just, I'm really curious if there's a, if there's a thread there. Because uh, what I heard you describing was like this, almost an adventure, sense of adventure. And did that, is that what drove you to the Navy? I mean, because going to the Naval Academy is is no small, you know, sort of, you know, let me just take some college classes and to join the Navy. That's a, that's hard work. Just just freaking getting in is takes intentional hard work. So was was there something that pulled you? They you know, that that ooh cool. Let me check that out. Let me try this sort of adventure attitude. Yeah. So I, I, I guess I, I'd call it a challenge. You know, I just, I, I seek challenges. And so my number one, I love the Clifton Strengths assessment. And, um, and so that was a, a personal development tool that was really helpful to me. Gosh, I took it probably 12 years ago when I was a little bit lost. And so I took the, um, they called it the Strengths Finder at the time. And I, so I took that assessment and, you know, my number one strength is competition. And so like, that's always kind of what's driven me. And so Mm -hmm. it wasn't like about going to the Naval Academy um, because I wanted to be uh, an admiral. It was, I wanted to go to the Naval Academy because I wanted to be challenged. Mm -hmm. And I really liked the types of people that went there. And when I met them on like recruiting trips and that sort of thing, I was like, man, these are, these are my kind of people. And I just, it was, was, I just, I loved the challenge and that's kind of, I guess, what's always attracted me to uh, an opportunity uh, is, is the challenge, whether it's, you know, entrepreneurship or whether it's the Academy or whether it's serving in the Navy or, you know, some of the things I did growing up, it's, um, it's the challenge and like, how can I win at this? Right. How can I, (laughs) you know, and so I don't know, know, putting it, uh, Putting it up like, you know, how do I win at this? One of the things that that made me think is you you seem to have like done what the proper thing is for people who are competitive, which is you internalize it, you know, being better than yourself the day before that kind of thing. Like you're you're clearly at that point now. When did you realize that? Because I think a lot of people who are really competitive, they keep that energy outwards. It's like going to take down somebody, going to beat somebody. When did you have that realization that you could turn that internally and, you know, be more effective that way? Yeah. So probably growing up, you know, after, you know, the, this, when I was, uh, you know, a kid playing baseball and I'd strike out and I'd throw the bat against the fence and yell at my teammates for <laughs> like making mistakes. <laughs> so, so with the, so with the, 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 so with the strengths, so I, lo- I love Clifton strengths. I want to kind of talk about that for a sec, but so for each of the strengths, there's a balcony and there's a basement, right? And so like so what you mentioned with the competition strength, you know, um, just wanting to beat people or win, lose, like that's kind of the basement for competition. I think that the balcony or competition at its best is how can we all win? And, um, and so, or how can I be better than I was yesterday? How can I, how can I beat like, (laughs) you know, last year's records and making it more like inward type of a competition wanting to be better than I was in the past. So, 
Um, you brought up a really good point and, you know, it's, it's still a work in progress. You know, there's still times when, you know, I might be out on the tennis court and like, you know, hit my racket against the fence or something, and like get angry, oh, yeah. but everything I tried to do today is, is how can we, how can we all win? How can you create, we create a win-win situation and, and where everybody's, everybody's winning. You know, it not quite the tennis racket moment, like you're saying, but uh, what I was picturing, because this happened to me definitely is because I'm a competitive guy, is almost like fighting with your team over something. And then you kind of have that moment of like, hey, man, we're working together. You realize that, right? Like we're all like we all want to be successful together. We're not trying to strike each other down anymore. Did you have a moment like that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, gosh, I'm trying to think back as it relates to um, the uh, the business stuff. But one of the kind of the key moments that I've that I realized before things started to really take off was it wasn't, I couldn't do things by myself. And so um, like, as a, you know, if this sounds like a lot of your listeners are entrepreneurs and, you know, when you start out, man, it's like you, it's just you and it's going to be a lonely journey. And if you never bring on team members of people that compliment you and then you're not going to be as, as successful. So I started to become more successful in business, kind of when I surrounded my people with or myself with people who, you know, just had different skill sets and di- brought different points of view to the table. And it, it is about them. Like, cause if it's all about you, it's like, who wants to work for a, with a dictator? Right. So, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, so it's, it's all, it's always about the team and what their goals are. And if you can make your teammates successful and help them achieve their goals, then you're going to achieve your goals almost you know, as a byproduct. We've... I think we've hinted at this some, but I've got to go back to what my original question was there, dad. Uh, uh, Scott, what was this? You mentioned that you got the spark from your wife's family, but what was that actually? Because entrepreneurship, there's things that people get lured into different aspects of, you know, you mentioned the competition side that you would recognize, you know, being competitive, but what was it that drove you to bring that competition to entrepreneurship versus, you know, any other avenue that you could go be competitive and, you know, try to be the best at? I think it was the freedom that entrepreneurship allows for, you know, so um, the freedom to, of time, right? So I could be competitive, you know, in medical device sales competing against, you know, Johnson and Johnson and all the other big companies. And, but I don't have freedom of time, you know, when the doctors call, like I got to respond. And so that I really liked, you know, the freedom of time, freedom of money, you know, I'm not limited, you know, when you work for a company, you're an expense at the end of the day, you're an expense. And so the owner of that company, you know, wants to minimize expenses, which is, you know, your salary most of, most of the time. Right. So that's how they, a lot of people view uh, employees as expenses rather than investments. So um, with entrepreneurship, man, you got freedom of money. Uh, The other one is freedom of purpose. You know, you guys are tribe and purpose, right? Like how, what's a better way. There's no better way to fulfill your purpose I mean, like when you can design your day and spend your time with the types of people that you really want to help, then, you know, you can do that in entrepreneurship. You can choose your clients, you can choose your teammates and you're not just like in the army or the Navy or the air force, right? You're thrown into like a division or, you know, what, and like you, you get what you get and you got to make the best of it. But in entrepreneurship man, you can, you can build your own team. You can you can find your own business partners, and and it can all be structured around your why. You know what it is that what drives you and and who you want to serve. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I got to shift to something though because I you, you said it, and I'm like, all right, I got to know what 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 were what was the best side hustle and the worst side hustle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So I've. Uh, this is funny. So these are really important. I think like, like a lot of times people will come on a podcast, right. And it's like the highlight reel, you know, I've listened to a lot of those, but it's, I always kind of like hearing the things that, that didn't work. Um, yeah. So, well, so the worst ones, and I don't know, I mean, maybe there's still some merit to some of these things, but uh, that's, Oh, that's how I can tell you're a true entrepreneur. Cause you still love those ideas. <laughs> I can tell. Cause I've had this conversation with on, my friends before. Those, you those still ideas, love them. <laughs> yeah. They're just on ice right now. But uh, so the, uh, so there's a one couple of ba- bad ones, not necessarily bad ones, but you know, so one of them was I was selling stadium. Uh, so clear bags that, you know, people buy 
for stadium events, right? So there's a, these clear bag policies. And I was kind of intrigued by Amazon, you know, being able, I wanted to kind of figure out how to sell something on Amazon. And so it was like, oh, you know, I go to a lot of concerts and they require these clear bags. So maybe I can find somebody to manufacture clear bags and I could sell them on Amazon and that would be a business. And so I found somebody to manufacture clear bags. I figured out how to sell them on Amazon and people bought them. And it was completely like empty for me. It was like, this is so stupid. Like, even though, I mean, even though there was, you know, maybe we'd sell 20 or 30 a day or something like that. Um, you know, it was somewhat profitable and, but they had no purpose. Like I'd had no connection with the customers. I didn't know who they were. It wasn't linked to anything that was meaningful to me. And so I just stopped and I I thought, you know, this is just a waste of time. So that was kind of one, you know, so starting a business that's not really linked to anything meaningful, uh, where you're solving a, somebody's challenge, you know, that you're really passionate about like helping them through a challenge or a goal that's you really resonate with. If that's missing, then it just falls, it fell kind of flat for me. So that was kind of one. Then the other one was, um, a, a podcast that I started my first podcast, it was called success start Sunday. And I was like, I'm going to learn how to podcast and whatever. I'm going to talk about goal setting and, you know, you know, cause success starts on Sunday. Right. So like, that's the beginning of the week, you know, that's a good time to think about the week ahead. And so I was going to offer these personal development tips and stuff about, and that one felt kind of flat. It was like, it wasn't targeted towards anybody. Um, I didn't, it was just me talking and I hated talking like to myself and I just, I hated it, but I did it for a year, probably like 11 months too long, but I did it for a year. <laughs> That's and, some serious fortitude, man, to do something like that. <laughs> didn't like. Didn't like. And, and then, uh, and then I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to stop. Like, you know, and I think like people that served in the military, they've got that grit factor, a lot of them. And you don't necessarily always want to quit something, right? Because we're taught not to quit. But sometimes quitting something is the best thing you could do because it frees you up. It frees up your energy to come up with the next thing. And so the next podcast that I did was a success. And that kind of launched me on my way. But that first one was where I learned all the skills. And I found the person that, you know, produces my podcast today, which I, I mean, I still work with him, you know, six years later. And so I, 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 you know, I was in the workout room, like building those podcast muscles and, you know, and the first one wasn't successful, but the second one was. So, um, so those are kind of two examples of, of things that didn't work out that well. Um, the one that did work out well, my first one was, uh, a, uh, an online store called strengthsmugs.com mm-hmm. where we sell licensed merchandise for the Clifton Strengths assessment. So that was my first entrepreneurial win, you know, so I kind of set up this, this passive income online store selling licensed merchandise, you know, to people that have taken the Strengths Finder assessment. And so today, you know, 27 million people have taken this assessment. I really loved the assessment. I'm a Gallup strengths coach. Like I went through their whole training program just because I'm a, a fanboy of it. You know, I love it. And uh, and so um, I launched that store in 2014. And uh, and yeah, so we so I found a print shop to print the mugs and t-shirts, and I set up the Shopify store. And you know, I launched the store on a Friday afternoon and had of my first sale, like within 10 minutes. And so mm. I think like when you, when you hit on something, like when you launch something and you hear crickets, like that's a, a sign. Right. But when you launch something and it's like people instantly like it, like that's, that's usually what happens. I think sometimes with, with these ideas mm. is like, you know, right away, whether it needs a little bit more work or if you're onto something. And so strength smugs was my first venture that, you know, we still do today. And it's, you know, it's <laughs> vacation money or whatever, but it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. But How did you a- feel about those ahead of time? Because talking about the response that you get, I think is one, one way to measure your success and stuff. But I think there's also this conversation that, you know, we have with a lot of entrepreneurs where it's like the idea that you love the most is the one that fails right in front of you over and over again. And the idea that you were like, oh, I don't really think that's going to work. That's the one that takes off a lot of the time. So how did you feel about those different, you know, 
those different side hustles as you were putting them together? Were, was your instinct right in that case? Yeah, so that's a good good uh, question. Um, and I'm trying to think back to what I was feeling, you know, back when I started Strengths Mugs. Break out the diary. Um, we got yeah, time. so break out the, the diary. <laughs> so with Strengths Mugs, the biggest struggle in entrepreneurship, one of the biggest struggles is taking your idea and from my going from idea to customer that's there's a you know that's and that's the most important part of the process right and you want to go from idea to customer in the fastest possible way because how many ideas have, have you guys had or have i had over the years that you never act on like you never take it to the point where somebody's going to pay you for that idea and so with strength mugs my my only goal with strength mugs was just to figure it out I, th I think this idea will work, I, but I don't know anything about the printing industry. Um, I don't know anything about starting an online store, but I just want to figure it out. And so, and so through that process, I learned about the printing industry. I learned that most people don't want to print customized products, right? And so that was a big challenge. Like they want to do runs of, you know, a hundred or a thousand, you know, they don't want to print like one mug that's, you know, different from all the other mugs because every product mm -hmm. and strength, strength, strength mugs was different. So I had to find a print shop that was willing to print customized products. So that was challenge number one. Challenge number two was, well, how do you start an e-commerce store? So this was, I think it was actually 2016 when I launched Strengths Mugs, mm -hmm. but that was kind of right as Shopify was hitting the scene. So I didn't really know what Shopify was. So I called my, uh, I, I got in touch with a um, high school buddy that designed websites and he's like, Hey man, I could like design this thing for you, you know, and it would have all the features and things that you would want, but it would cost 10 grand or you could go to Shopify and they're like, that's a platform that's built for the business that you're trying to start where, you know, for a couple hundred bucks, you can, you know, get started and we'd be able to print out the shipping labels and all of that. So, so that's all I wanted to do was get to that first customer and then just challenge myself to not give up on the idea. I didn't even care if I only made one sale. I just wanted to get it to the point of where it was, the idea was executed. And so mm. took me about three months or so, but I, I would literally drive to work every day with my, I had like a mock-up, my strengths mug that I made online somewhere. And I had it like in my uh, passenger seat of my car and it just stared at me every day. You know, like, what are you, are you going to figure out how to make me, you know? And like, like and so, uh, yeah, so it took me about three months to figure all the, out all those things, but I did find a print shop that was willing to work with me and I got the Shopify store set up. And then it was just a matter of, you know, I'm sitting in, in my office on a Friday afternoon at four o'clock and I'm like, well, I got all the pieces in place. Like, why haven't you launched yet? And so I went to this Facebook group that I was, that I'm a part of that um, had a bunch of Gallup coaches and people in there. There's about 5,000 people in there. And I dropped the link to the, the Shopify store and a picture of my mug. And man, if there wasn't like 300 likes and like all these comments and orders were, you know, kind of coming through, you know, pretty much right away. And then I tweeted this guy by the name of Michael Hyatt, who was, uh, kind of an influencer that I was following at the time that I looked up to and I was listening to his podcast. And it's like, I knew Mike, I knew he had, had taken the strengths finder assessment. I knew what, that his number one strength was achiever. And so I tweeted him. I was like, Hey, Michael Hyatt, your like number one achiever strength will look great on the strengths mug. And, and then I left work for the day. Right. And so I'm driving home and I'm at like a stoplight and I'm, I'm like checking my, <laughs> like, seeing if any more orders came in and like, and then I saw my, in, in, the, in my email that like Michael Hyatt had retweeted my tweet, like to 200,000 of his followers. And he said, you know, I'm considering ordering these for everybody on my team. And so still to the, to, to this day, he's a customer and he orders mugs for all of his new team members. And, um, but just from those two things, a post in that Facebook group and that tweet, like I got orders all weekend, you know, from like a, you know, a called like an MVP website, you know, the minimum viable <laughs> website, you know, but you if sleep the, it all that weekend where you're like, Oh, 
Oh no, another one. Another refresh. <laughs> refresh. <laughs> but it gave me so much confidence. I was like, I'm not like, hey, I'm not stupid. I'm not like I can I can actually do this. I can actually bring an idea to market and get people to kind of pay me for something that's that I created. And that was the first win, you know, that led to a lot of other things. But um, so that was my that's my my favorite side hustle, even to yeah. till today. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and there, there's something that's really cool in there. I think it, it's it's one of the the probably one of the biggest lessons I would say in that, that, that applies across the board is you said, all right, well, who are the people, you know, happen to be part of this group? Who are the, where are the people that, that do this thing or like this thing that I want to do? And you dropped it in there, which is high probability and low risk and zero cost. Right. I mean, and then, and then you took one more risk, a high probability in, We'll call it a risk because it's it's a personal risk, a feeling of, well, let me just send this to Michael Hyatt. I hope it doesn't bother him, right? Because that's 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 the self-doubt rolling around in our head, right? Is I hope it doesn't bother Michael. I'm gonna tweet this to him. And then it explodes like that. Because the again, in the true reality of both of those, even though your your the little voice inside your the self-doubt voice inside your head is going. Uh, they're not, you're going to, nobody, nobody, nobody. The risk is so low that it's like, what's the worst that could happen, right? Michael doesn't do anything with it. Nobody says anything about it on the web, on the, uh, in the Facebook group. But the other side of it is the, the, the outcome probability of, of, uh, well, now, now I'm screwing up my analogies, but, <laughs> but that, that whole part of it is so huge. That's like, you got to ask yourself, why not? I mean, what's it, what's it really going to hurt? Right. Cause I know I've, I've had clients and friends and they're all like, ah, oh, you know, I don't want to send that. I don't want to call them. I don't want to give them an e send them an email or, or whatever. And it's like, you know, if they don't want to talk to you, they ain't going to pick up the phone. If they don't want to reply to your email. They're not going to reply to your email. But what if they do? Right. What if they That's, do? Yeah. That, that should be the name of like, uh, yeah. What if they do? <laughs> Cause I mean, even today, I mean, how many times do we even, I mean, I, I'm sure I avoid things every day. I, I avoid something that maybe I should, you know, like, I don't want to bother somebody or I'm not going to call this person and, you know, and it's that that's exactly what you should do is you actually should call them and you should actually text them because you never know what's on the other end of that. Right. And when they, if they do, what if they do say yes? Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> but then you're like, Oh shit, they did say yes. <laughs> that's all, <laughs> that's the one that always cracks me up. Uh, you know, when I was uh, working with government contracting stuff, I uh, used to always laugh about that. Cause you know, you spend all this time and effort and you put together this beautiful proposal and you're like, all right, we're going to win this. And everybody's walking around high-fiving themselves just because they hit send. Right. But it, it's this weird feeling. And then all of a sudden, you know, three months, six months later, the government calls up and says, Hey, uh, we're awarding this contract to you. And you go into the, Holy shit. What do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just got to have at bats, you know, and that wasn't strength smugs. wasn't my first at bat, you know, and it wasn't my last at bat and, you know, but I had, you know, 10 at bats before that. And, you know, and so that was the one that, Hey, got on base this time, right. I didn't strike out. Right. Yep. And so it gave me confidence to do the next one. Which, all right. Perfect segue. You said 10 at bats, 10 X vets. What? And, and I, I'm kind of curious about this too. Yep. I'm still, I'm still pulling out those dad joke uh, transitions, Camden. Um, that was an impressive one. I'm not even mad on that one, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and everybody's a little bit different. But what drew you back to to the veteran tribe to, you know, because you're, you're doing these other things, you know, you're 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 diving in full into med device sales, uh, Gallup strengths, you know, there's vets intermixed in all that. But you've turned and gone back to, I mean, your roots, if you will, you know, with at the academy and, and being a naval officer. Yeah. And so I think. Uh, it was, it was the purpose piece, you know, it was when I, with strength smugs, there was a lot of lessons learned in there. You know, there was, I learned a couple of things, a lot of things. One was, you know, we kind of talked about the ones of like, you know, getting an idea to market and not being afraid to 
launch launch an idea and not being afraid of rejection. And we talked about that. Um, the other one that I learned is like the riches are in the niches, right? Success Start Sunday podcast wasn't success, that's successful because like it wasn't targeted at anybody. Mm. But Strengths Mugs, you know, that's a, you either get it or you don't. Like you hit the website and it's like either for you or it's not. And so that's actually a really good place to be. So with, with, the, with that store, you know, I think at the time, maybe 15 million people had taken the assessment and that was my market. And all right, well, at least it's defined. Um, and so I kind of thought back to some of the co- like coach, I was doing some coaching like on the side and, you know, just trying to figure out the types of people I wanted to work with. And so after I started Strength Smugs, I was like, you know, uh, you know, who is it that I really just, in, re- I just enjoyed talking with. <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of what it kind of, kind of came down to. Like, who is it that I want to help? If I'm on a Zoom call, who's on the call with me? And, um, you know, I really enjoyed the conversations that I was having at that time with um, people that I had went to the academy with that, you know, maybe had a day job, but were st- wanted to start a business mm-hmm. or had already started a business. Like that's who I wanted to hang out with. So, um, so kind of before 10 X vets, you know, I, and I still to, to this day, you know, so I run a group called the service Academy business mastermind. And so that was my second podcast. And that was a podcast where I would interview people that graduated from one of the U S service academies. So like air force Academy, West point, And, um, but it was focused on business owners, like people that went to an Academy and they started a business and that's what it was. And so just like, you know, with strengths mugs where I knew where all those people hung out that had taken this, the strengths assessment, I knew where all the Academy people hung out. So I built, you know, a kind of a, an email list at the time. And I started this podcast and I would just Can I jump a, in. Cause I want I want to ask a clarifying question yeah, please. in that spot. Is that a, a skill or an understanding that you got during sales? I'm just, just kind of tying, tying threads back to, cause when you were selling med devices, you know, you had a, somebody probably taught you about the, the riches are in the niches. I'm pointing over here. To yeah, yeah. So actually, I mean, I was only, I only did med device sales from, for like a year and a half. So, mm-hmm. and I was probably, I spent more time, you know, in the, doing the construction, you know, sales and management mm-hmm. roles and that sort of thing. The riches in the niches. I learned that from all of the like unsuccessful things I threw at the wall, like the entrepreneurial <laughs> Uh, adventures, you know, yeah. kind of leading up to some of these other things. And, you know, I probably heard it on some podcasts. There was a podcast that I was like, I mean, I just was immersed in like books, Jim Rohn, you know, audio CDs and podcasts. And so on the way to work, I'd listen to all these. I just try to like put myself into that entrepreneurial environment so that I could then like, you know, gravitate to that, you know, place that I wanted to be. And so, um, so I, I'm sure I, 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 you know, I heard it probably back then, but it really rung true for me when I launched Strengths Mugs because I'm like, oh, that's that's what that means, right? And so, <clears throat> and then the same thing happened with the Service Academy Business Mastermind. Like you would think that there's not enough people. Like this isn't a big enough audience. You know, maybe there's 150,000 Service Academy graduates out there, and you know, maybe 10% of them are actually business owners. Like that's a that's a micro like a microscopic niche. Right. Yeah. But, but that was the reason why it, it worked because there were, no, were, there were no other podcasts interviewing service Academy graduates, let alone ones that started a business. And so, um, and that's, so that's why, you know, that very first podcast that I did um, for the service Academy business mastermind got more downloads in one episode than the entire year of success starts Sunday. So um, and so, and it, but you could always niche back up, you know, and, you know, I don't, didn't want to just organize my life totally around people that went to a service academy. So you can always, you know, niche back up with things or kind of explore other, op- other ideas and markets and stuff. But I think your, your purpose is kind of rooted in a niche, right? And so if you think about starting something that has meaning, you know, think like I was just thinking about, well, who are the people that, 
I enjoy, like, what are the challenges I enjoy solving most? Or what are the goals that I enjoy helping people with the most? And who, like, who are, like, <laughs> like, who is that person? Right. Yeah. And that kind of brought me to my, my purpose and who I wanted to help. And then I just had to figure out the business model around that, because it's not always easy figuring out a business model when, you know, you enjoy the work and you enjoy the people so much, you often sometimes don't want to charge them. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, you know, you just want to help people out. And, you know, so that was another, that was a challenge that I faced, but eventually kind of figured out, you know, a business model and was able to do it all this stuff full time. So, you know, you, you talked some about, you know, building on your wins and, you know, taking that niche and, you know, kind of building up from there. What's your, I guess, kind of big picture, stepping back a bit, what's your like entrepreneurial philosophy on that of building on the wins of, but also not being distracted from projects, those type of things. What, what's your take on that, Scott? Yeah. So just, yeah, real quick, just so I understand the question. So the big picture on, um, you know, kind of going like, can you, yeah, maybe just yeah, on, on, from on, an idea. like, yeah, uh, no, so more so on, you know, getting, getting your wins, building on top of it, uh, you know, kind of those new businesses, new ideas, new niches, whatever it is. And then also the other end of it of not letting yourself get distracted, chasing rabbits all day and then never make any money. That's kind of the, the balancing <laughs> act of that. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so the biggest challenge, so I think there's got to, I think when you're on the right track, there's a theme that ties them all together. And so that theme could be like your purpose. That theme could be the types of people that you're, you're working with, um, you know, and so having, having a showing up every day and working on different projects works if they're all tied together in some way, if they're all disconnected and, you know, one's on this Island and one's over here on this Island and they have nothing in common with each other, then that can be like, really distracting i'd imagine you know so so the stuff that i like to do um you know i want it all to like work together so um and sometimes that's a little it's it, it, i got to think about it a little bit okay yeah. so you know like you know it's, you know there's been a lot of there's been spin-offs from my service academy business mastermind like things that i started and incubated there that became their own brand like 10x vets we also started an investment fund called the Academy Fund um, that that was incubated on the Service Academy Business Mastermind on that network. And then it became its own brand. Um, and so like in my head, I can kind of see how they're, they're all, all these things are connected. But sometimes from a marketing standpoint, you know, people it's it, you can lose people like, oh, man, what's this other thing? Like, how does this <laughs> And, you know, and interplay. So. What that makes me think of is the, in, what I guess I would call it internal marketing, internal messaging of that, of explaining that to your team, how those all shape together. Do you, do you run into an issue there at all? Yeah. So at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm just kind of thinking about, you know, what I, you know, I've, I think one thing that um, I've learned over the years, you know, through, through, uh, you know, my different experiences, different programs that I'm a part of, you know, you got to kind of figure out like, well, what is it that you do best? Right. What is it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dan Sullivan from strategic coach, he calls it unique ability. You know, what is that thing that, that you do best? And so for me being competitive, like I help people win, you know, and the, who I help people win, you know, the, the who behind that is I love working with military veteran entrepreneurs. Like that's who I want to help win. And so, if all of my projects are kind of connected to that and that's the, you know, the underlying current or the, the theme, you know, that connects them all, then, you know, that's like the litmus test of, is this something I want to do? Or is this something like I'm going to pass on? Right. Like the, like the, the stadium bags, right. Selling clear bags to, I mean, that has nothing to do with what I'm good at or who I want to work with. And so that was one that bit the dust. So, um, you know, so, so I think it, it just kind of, that's helped me at least clarify, yeah. you know, if, uh, if, a, if a project makes sense or not. Well, there, there's so much to that. And, and, you know, we talk about that a lot on the show and, and even with clients too, is if it's not pulling you, then, then it's going to be so hard to do it. So hard to put in the work. I mean, you might as well, truthfully, as an entrepreneur in an entrepreneur sense, you're better off going and getting a corporate job 
than trying to be an entrepreneur or something that you have to push yourself to do every day. Not saying it's it's going to be, you know, uh, unicorns and rainbows every morning when you wake up and it's like, woohoo, I get to do this. But you know what, if, it, if the that end state, that outcome that you're striving to achieve, the purpose doesn't grab hold you by the waistband and yank you into action, then it's probably probably not the right thing, you know? It, it should be effortless. It should be yeah. fun. It should be effortless. It should be, it should come easy, you know, like, and that's kind of, you know, but in the military, it's like everything should be hard. <laughs> and so you got to persevere and you got to do things you don't want to do. I remember, I remember getting pepper sprayed, like, because they wanted to train me to how to like react with pepper spray. I'm like, I don't need to be trained. Like if, if I get sprayed with pepper spray, like I'll learn then I'll take my chances of, <laughs> like, you know, so I think, I think that's, and that's one thing that, that I would say veterans and me specifically struggle with is that, you know, you think it has to be hard because a lot of those things we did in the military were hard. They were really hard, you know? And, and so, um, but with entrepreneurship, man, it doesn't have to be, I mean, you got to put in the work, but it should be fun. It should, especially when you're, you're doing what it is that you do best. It's fun. It's like, you love the clients and the customers and, you know, you're, you're fascinating them in all different ways and ways which make what's just, which is just completely fun doing. So that's kind of what, at least I strive for every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we used to say, uh, you don't have to train to be miserable. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, why, why do that? Oh, you need to turn. All right. Sidebar. Uh, you got to turn the air conditioning off in the planning bay because you're going to a, out into a hot, humid environment. So you should be, while you're in the planning phase of the operation, you know, you should be climatizing. Yeah, that doesn't pass the common sense. But I'll just find out when when I get into that situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I got a, I got a story I got to tell on that because I don't yeah. think I've ever told the story of the podcast. It is such a stupid little thing. Uh, I remember in high school because for rugby it was you know John Patterson, great. Of uh, you you got to make the right decision when there's no oxygen in the brain. And so I was studying for a test during rugby season. And I was like, if I can learn this stuff for this test while there's no oxygen in my brain, because I just worked out, then I'll crush this test the next day. Well, turns out I'm not taking a test while I'm running five miles. And so that was a terrible way to prepare for that test. And I did tor- terribly on it because, you know, you're not, you're not preparing for the right environment. Yeah, you <laughs> can understand your, your problem set. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Scott, what's, what's next with the 10 X vets? I mean, what's the next, next thing I know you've done, you, you did a, uh, did you call it a retreat? I can't remember now. Sorry. I can't remember, but a gathering we'll call, I'll call it a gathering. You tell me what you called it, where you brought members together. What, what's next, uh, on the slate for y'all? Yeah. So, so 10 X vets, um, so kind of where we're at with that. So I started it about just about two years ago, we've got about a hundred and just past a hundred members in 10 X vets a couple of months ago. And, you know, the way that it's structured is we've got these different groups that meet each month. It's almost like a mastermind group of, of mastermind groups. So we've got a capital circle, we call them circles. So we've got a capital circle that meets every month. That's led by somebody who's really great at, you know, capital raising, um, business partner of mine on a, a couple of different ventures. We got a B2B circle for people that have a B2B business. We have a digital marketing circle. We have a real estate development circle. We have an acquisition circle for people looking to buy, buy companies, healthcare circle. We just start, so we have all these different resources and where you can connect with other veterans who are business owners and have a very specific either type of business or an interest. And so, um, and, and so that's kind of how it's structured. We did our first in-person event in January. So that was a lot of fun. We all met up in down in Naples, Florida. I think since we last spoke, like members are starting to host events as well. So I flew up to cool. DC, uh, Northern Virginia a couple of weeks ago. Cause one of the guys is like, Hey, I want to get together the people that are in 10 X vets that, you know, live in the DC area. So that was a lot of fun. So people are kind of starting to host their own events. Um, I think what's next and what's most important to me is, really put in a 10 X and 10 X vets. So we just hired a, uh, an on um, a new member to our team. That's um, I think that's going to really help keep people on track. So you join 10 X vets. Um, 
there's a couple of things, you know, it's not just like this, this big networking group, although we have to do a lot of networking. It's, you know, we want you, you take the Clifton Strengths assessment. We want you to ed- identify like your genius, you know, what is it? What are your top strengths? Um, so that's one thing we've, we've integrated into the onboarding process. And, you know, what's your 10X goal? So you're here, like you've joined this group. Like, what is it that you want to achieve? And like, if you add a zero to a key metric in your business, whether it's your sales or your pricing or whatever it might be, we want to help you achieve that and build the resources around helping somebody achieve that. So that's, that's really kind of what I'm most excited about right now. I always love like beating the game. Like, and so that's kind of the game I want to beat right now is like, you know, somebody joins and they add a zero next to a key metric in their business at the end of it. And, you know, multiply it by 10, like what's the system that is going to help this person achieve that? And how can we track it? How can we find out when they're stuck and and connect them with the resources that they need to, to achieve that? So that's, you know, something that is really exciting to me. And, um, you know, probably looking out over the next year or two, like that's what we want to like double down on is that that aspect of 10 X bets. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah excited for where that's going and uh which always brings me back to how how do you what did what did we learn and you know what's the what's the thing uh that we can apply and uh you know you, you touched on something i've always been fond of you know i talked about the you know your your purpose pulling you uh but you know it's not just the why but it's the who and, and when you have that clarity of why do I want to do this and who do I want to do it for or, and, or with then when you, when you really lock those two things together, then it doesn't matter what, you know, what kind of obstacles or how many hours or how many days or how long, because it's always pulling you. And it's always, you know, when you, when you have that clarity in the who you, you start, you can even visualize that person. And I, you know, I hear that with you and that, I want that guy who signed up today. I want to. I want to beat his his extra zero on whatever that metric is. I want that, and that's that's what's pulling you to it. So that for me, I love that reminder. Uh, Camden, how about you? What'd you learn? Yeah, kind of in a similar vein of you know, let purpose guide your projects. I think that's something I think about a lot as I look at my long list of projects in my notebook here that I want to work on and different business ideas and all that kind of stuff. Of making sure that it all falls back to that pro- uh, to that purpose to make sure it aligns there. And then uh, I don't think you specifically said this, Scott, but I might have just implied or. Uh, and you might have implied it for me. I don't know, whatever words. Uh, but that that the. Uh, when you let your purpose guide your projects, then you don't have the need to go chase the rabbit because you have somebody like you're taking care of is kind of the way I'm thinking about it. That if you're serving something and it's tied into your purpose, as much as you might want to go do more, you don't, you're not going to overextend yourself because you have somebody you're taking care of. You have a purpose that you're working towards. Yeah. And from a time management perspective, like, that's a great tamp time management system. It's like, you know, like, Oh, like you could start this project, but you know, is the who that that's going to serve really that important to you? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, not that the person's not important to you, but is there, there is their challenge or their need important for, yeah. for you to help them with. And so, um, yeah. So, How about you, Scott? It's my turn. <laughs> yeah. It's your turn. Your man. turn. Yeah. So for me, you know, kind of just having an opportunity, um, to a lot of times as entrepreneurs or high achievers, or I know like all all of you guys, it's, you're focused on the future. You know, what is it that I want to do next? What is it? I'm not quite hitting my goals, you know, and it's, you know, kind of similar to the horizon, like where you, your goals are like, you never can like catch up to it. Right. And so uh, for today, it was kind of fun to think back on the journey of like all of the things that, you know, before I was like five years ago or 10 years ago. And I think that that's probably, you know, my big takeaway from today is, and or learning point is like, you know, it's important to don't measure yourself against, you know, the horizon or like the future, like, Mm -hmm. you know, measure yourself against the past and where you've been. And so, um, you know, and find gratitude in that. So it was, that's, it was nice to kind of go down the 
uh, go, go, go down into the past with you guys today and think through the, <laughs> the stuff I threw against the wall back in the day and, you know, eventually added up to, to something. So, um, and, uh, appreciate that, that opportunity. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So how do folks uh, get in touch with you, learn more about 10 X vets and the other projects that you got going on? Yeah. So 10 X vets is just 10 X vets.com. So the number 10 X vets.com uh, for people that are interested in the investment fund either. So we're, we're lending money to military veteran real estate entrepreneurs. Um, so short-term lending people that are doing fix and flips, people that are, um, in need of private financing, you know, we've lent 15 million, just over 16 million over the last, you know, 20 months. And, uh, we've raised about 10 million in equity from investors. So we're connecting accredited investors with, you know, military veteran real estate entrepreneurs who are in need of the capital. So we're the kind of the conduit for that. So, um, that website is academyfund.com. Uh, so if you're, in need of, of capital for a real estate project or want to invest, that's uh, the website there. And my email address is scott at 10 xbetscom And you can find me on LinkedIn too. So oh, you got your cough button, I think, Dad. My cough button on. Yes, I did. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> coughing earlier. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate uh, really appreciate your time, man. Uh, good to hang out with you and, and get get into some of that origin story to to uh, steal the was that marvel or one of them things that does that camden origin stories right yeah yep sure <laughs> sure <laughs> all right hey scott thanks again camden run us out all right thank you all for listening to the camden otis show and a special thanks to our guest scott mackis for joining us today and of course our sponsor tribe and purpose find your tribe find your purpose get started for free today at findyourpurpose.coach Make sure to follow the Cam and Otis show on Instagram and Facebook, and please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening. Videos of the podcast are on our YouTube page, and you can always get a full archive of our episodes at the Cam and Otis show Thanks again. We'll see y'all next time.